Wouldn't it be great to download things like monologues, poems, presentations, scriptures, scripts, song lyrics, and speeches directly into your brain? Well, that's not possible yet, but the next best thing is Verbatim. Verbatim is a free web app that can help you learn to memorize pieces like this word for word faster than you may have ever thought possible. A link to Verbatim is included in this video's information box. Before I get into the program itself, I'd like to discuss some of the technical requirements. Verbatim was built on jQuery Mobile, so it should run just fine on iOS devices as well as Android, Windows Phone 7, Blackberry, and many more. Actually, any browser, desktop or mobile, with HTML5 and CSS3 capabilities, as well as 5 meg or more of browser cache, should work for this. Thanks to use of browser cache, you'll be able to shut off your browser and your device and still come back to the piece in your app. As for using it offline, one of the easiest ways to do that is simply bring it up in your browser while you have a connection and then just keep using it even while offline later as it's entirely self-contained. Online access is really only required for clicking on the links in the manual. Other ways to use it offline include storing it in Dropbox and then running it from your mobile device's Dropbox app. It can also work on browsers with offline storage capabilities or document storage apps as long as they can run HTML5, CSS3 and have at least 5 meg of browser cache. More details can be found in the manual, always available from the main page. The manual also contains links to online resources, including tips on memorizing and recalling pieces, reciting them effectively, and of course, sources for pieces themselves. The program itself works in four simple steps. Choose a piece, enter the piece, memorize it, and then test your recall. Since you're going to be spending time memorizing the work and carrying it around in memory, it is important that you choose a piece that has some value to you. If it's important enough to memorize, it's also worth it to take the time to do a little research on it as well. Besides the manual, the only other option available when you first use a program is enter text. Entering the text is easy. We'll start by typing the title. We'll use invitation for this demo as it's a short piece. Next, type the author, Shell Silverstein in this case, and then go to the body text section. You could just type the piece in the body text section, but it's quicker if you copy and paste it from your favorite text editor. I'll hit enter, and note that the body text window is expanded so you can see the entire text. In verbatim, the piece will be broken up into individual lines, and where the lines break is determined by how it's entered in here, so you want to edit it in your text editor before you paste it in the body text section. With poems, it's usually easy to see where to break the individual lines. With speeches or music lyrics, you'll usually want to break them up into individual sentences. For longer sentences, you may even want to break them up at other punctuations, such as commas or semicolons. Make sure and save the piece by clicking Submit. If you've forgotten any information, it will ask for it when you click Submit. Otherwise, you'll be notified that the piece is saved and how much memory it uses in bytes. The text itself is stored in your browser's cache, and most browsers usually allow 5 meg. Check your browser's documentation to be sure. Now, 5 meg is over 5 million bytes, so if you see your storage space start to approach that, you may want to consider breaking the piece up into two or more parts. Click OK, and you're automatically returned to the home page. Note that the inner text box has now changed to display the title, and a delete button has been added below it. Clicking delete will ask you whether you're sure you want to clear the piece. Clicking OK will erase the piece, and cancel will let it remain. Now that you have a piece in memory, two new sections have appeared on the main page, Memorize Text and Test Recall of Text. Our next section is Memorize Text. Now that the text has been entered, it's time to start memorizing the text. The method used in verbatim comes directly from J.J. Hayes' article on how to memorize poetry. You'll find a link to this article in this video's information box. I'll start describing the information from the bottom up so I can more effectively describe the memorization technique as I go. At the very bottom, there are four buttons, Back, Next, Start, and End. Clicking on these will take you back and forth through the text you entered line by line in the window in the middle of the screen. Naturally, when you're at the end of the piece, the next and end buttons aren't enabled, and when you're back at the start, the back and start buttons aren't enabled. As you move, the line information tells you where you are within the poem itself. Hide line will hide the displayed line itself and then change to a show line button. Clicking show line returns the line to the screen and changes the button itself back to hide line. How do you use this to memorize the piece, though? What you're going to do is read the line that's displayed out loud. If you're a dreamer, come in. Next, click Hide Line and recite it from memory. If you're a dreamer, come in. 
click show line again and verify that you correctly remembered that one line. I did in this case, so I click next to move on to the next line. Here the process is repeated. I'll read the line out loud. If you're a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, I'll hide the line and try and repeat it from memory. Let's say I make a mistake. If you're a dreamer, a wisher, a fibber, I show the line and realize I should have said liar, not fibber. In this case, I read the same line out loud again. If you're a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, I hide the line, try and recite it from memory. If you're a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, I show the line and see that I got it correct this time, so I move on to the next line. I repeat this process line by line in this manner until I get to the last line of the poem. Once you go through the poem like that one line at a time, you're going to repeat the process but with a difference. Go up to the display menu and where it says one line, click on it and a menu will come up, offering a choice from one to six lines. We just did one line at a time, so we'll, in this case we'll click two lines. The window in the middle will now automatically jump back to the beginning of the poem and show two lines at a time. So naturally we're going to repeat the same process we did earlier, but just with two lines. Again, read the lines off the screen out loud. If you're a dreamer, come in. If you're a dreamer, a wisher, a liar. Hide the lines and recite them from memory. If you're a dreamer, come in. If you're a dreamer, a wisher, a liar. Did I get it right? If not, I'd read and recite these same two lines again, once from the screen, once from memory, but since I got these two lines correct, I'll just move on to the next two lines. Naturally, we go through the entire piece in this manner again. Once you can do it two lines at a time, you're going to repeat that three lines at a time, then four lines, five lines, and finally six lines at a time. Believe it or not, regardless of the length of the piece, by the time you go through the process six lines at a time, you'll have it effectively memorized. Here's a few extra tips. Even if you think you have it memorized by the time you get to, say, four or five lines, I suggest always working through it six lines, because more practice can always help it lock it in better. Also, just before you go to sleep at night, recite the poem from memory completely and as best you can, even if you have to stumble through it. This way, you'll more effectively be telling your brain that this information is important enough that it should be transferred into long-term memory while you sleep. When you wake up in the morning, try and recall the poem. You'll be surprised how much more easily it comes to mind. Next, we're going to move on to testing your recall. Once you've memorized the piece, it's time to test your recall of it. The test recall section looks very similar to the memorization page, but there are a few differences. This time, the window in the middle will always contain five lines and can't be hidden. Just as in the memorization section, though, you can use the back, next, start, and end buttons to move through the text. Notice the text lines themselves look quite a bit different, and each one features a magnifying glass above it. Also notice the title bar now features a score, currently 0 of 0 for a total of 0%. Instead of the full text, only the first letters are shown, as well as any letters immediately following apostrophes or dashes. Start with the first line and see if you can recall what it is just from the first letters. I believe this is, if you are a dreamer, come in. To verify this, click on the magnifying glass. When you do that, the full sentence will be revealed and the magnifying glass will be replaced by a green plus and a red minus button. Since I got that line right, I'll click the green plus button. Notice that the red minus button disappears and the score is updated to reflect the fact that I've tested myself on one line and I've got that one line correct for a 100% score so far. Let's try and do that with the next line, but let's say I make a mistake. If you are a doer, a wisher, a liar, so I click the magnifying glass to check, and oh, I see I got it wrong. It was dreamer, not doer. In this case, I click the red minus button to show that I got it wrong. The score now shows that I've tried two lines, but only got one of them correct for a score of 50%. Note that the scoring is done entirely on the honor system. You can go through and just click the green plus buttons on every line, but you would only be cheating yourself. You're going to go through this recall test for each line in the piece. Since this is just a demo, I'm going to be clicking the rest as all green plus buttons. And when you need to move through the text, just use the navigation button. Once you get to the last line of the piece, an alert window will come up and it'll show you your final score, six of seven lines for an 85.71% score. It also says to practice again, choose a new hint method. The hint method we've been using is called first letters. 
There are, however, two other hint methods. In word length, all the letters are replaced with X's with capitalization and punctuation preserved, and any numbers that are present would be replaced with nines. Note that the score has been reset and you're back at the first lines again. The other hint method is called fill in the blanks. Note that for this particular piece, the score is already 2 of 2, 100%, even though we haven't done anything yet. That's because verbatim needs at least three words in a sentence before it can blank any of them out. And the last two lines of invitation, as it happens, are come in, come in. Since verbatim can't blank these lines out, these two lines are added to your score as a sort of freebie. That's how you test your recall. And this completes the video tutorial on how to use verbatim to memorize pieces word for word. I hope you find it useful.